takes you to the heart of the action. Boot takes you to the heart of the action. Remember goals during the course of the evening from Old Trafford where Manchester United play Arsenal tonight. But live on Sky Sports, the FA Cup quarter-final replay sponsored by Littlewoods between Liverpool and Leeds United. And our match commentators here at Anfield are Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thank you, Richard. Gary Speed, a courageous young man. The broken cheekbone there was down the left-hand side of his face. The original diagnosis was for a three-month layoff. He's back in under one month, obviously with the extra incentive of proving himself tonight to be in contention for consideration for a place at Wembley on Sunday. He's had one reserve game, but went rather gingerly through that, I understand. Dermot Gallagher is the referee, as he was at Elland Road. <laughs> Liverpool against Leeds United has always quickened the pulse since those great battles going back to the days when the respective managers were Bill Shankly and Don Reavy. <laughs> Brian Dean and Tony Yeboah. Leeds has his now their superstition and it served them well in the domestic cup this season forsaking the squad numbers for the traditional 1 to 11. There's Carlton Palmer in harness as one of three central defenders with uh, Lucas Radovi, the South African, and John Pemberton, who's missed a lot of football recently through injury. Plenty of pace in there, and uh, that's out of uh, respect, of course, to Mrs. Collymore and Fowler. McAllister will try and orchestrate the play for Leeds as he, uh, well, when he does, they play well. Yeboah chasing. Just looking at Mark Ford as well, Mark, uh, early on, he's just having a little look around. He's not with him at the moment, but he's just having a look at Steve McManaman. It'll just be interesting to see if he carries on in that vein. Well, Howard Wilkinson has called for greater boldness from his players. That's not to say that they're going to be that gung-ho, perhaps, in, in chasing the game. It's always very difficult to come to Anfield and do that to Liverpool. But when they've got the ball, to be more aggressive with it than they were, having uh, done well in discharging their defensive responsibilities in the match at Helen Road. He's very uh, optimistic about tonight. Liverpool will have other ideas. Yeboah chasing. Watched by Mark Wright, who's had that very welcome news today from his point of view. Back in the England squad for the first time since 1992. Along with four of his Liverpool colleagues, including, of course, Robbie Fowler. Thomas who missed out has been mentioned in dispatches by Terry Venables as well. Stan Collymore must have uh, come close. That gives you uh, a measure of the talent on the current Liverpool side. And a little unlucky there. Yeboah had just let that go. Nigel Worthington had a lovely position beyond him. McManaman. Ball trying to match the run. The ball came his way, but Palmer had been brought down by Palmer. Quick free kick from McManaman. Fowler, pass came behind him, couldn't improvise. From Lukic, who didn't keep goal here when Leeds lost 5 0 two months ago. And they did leave the ground uh, with their heads held high, I can tell you. Feeling that much of the damage came after. A penalty decision, there was no doubt about that against Gary Kelly. But under the uh, current legislations, Kelly had to be sent off. And then it was very much uphill for Leeds after that. 
This is Thomas. a game. We've got a football match here tonight, Mark. Don't be fooled. I don't think anyone. I think one or two have been fooled by that scoreline. And the leads are here to just make up the numbers. Nothing could be further from the truth. What a finest of the FA Cup. We don't win them easily without working your socks off. Back from Ruddock, who's missed nine games. He lost his place, incidentally, through a suspension which was caused by a booking here against Leeds. Not remembered as much as the two goals he got in that game. But it had its significance. Game. I think that Leeds have started well. Yeah, it's the opening five minutes. They started quite brightly. Aaron McAllister's been saying how pleased that uh, he is that Leeds have got this game. He viewed the opposite way, but it would be um, a necessary inconvenience in the week of the Coca Cola Cup final. But, but it's uh, stopped a productive build up and they. Uh, Keep their minds away from Wembley. No oh, surprise, no surprise oh, here, is it? Fowler anywhere within 30 yards gets time. Set his stall. Then in his left side in particular, he's not going to waste any time and get the shot on target. Another reason they might be happy to have this game tonight, man. I think this is very much a system they might employ in the cup final. Villa play a very similar sort of formation to Liverpool. And they might be regarding this as a little bit of practice as well towards that. Scales. John Scales, who has an FA Cup winner's medal. Against Liverpool, of course, with Wimbledon. And he's uh, on the advance here. McManaman. Collymore made up the ground quickly. Camberton looked favourite to get to that. McManaman. Barnes. And Thomas. McAteer trying to get beyond Worthington. And start the sort of supply that we highlighted earlier. I think those will be good battles. McAteer, Worthington. Jones and Kelly. Right. And the scales. Leeds holding their shape. But Fowler requiring the player uh, who was giving the insurance there, Palmer, to come across. Fowler ran in behind, ran off the uh, right of it. Lovely movement from Fowler. Pulled short as if he was going short for the ball in. Radebe gets sucked in, he just spun behind him. There was the advantage of the extra defender. Thomas, the tackle by Yeboah. Not always that willing to work back, but involved in the team calls here early on. Barnes, McAllister couldn't get to it. Barnes again. Speed. Pemberton. And by Yeboa. McAllister trying to uh, get away from Thomas. Easily cut out by Ruddock, really, on the edge of the deep. McManaman. Ford is close, but not close enough. 
Collymore against Radovic. He did uh, better that time, forced him wide, and then they've got a piece of the ball, and Leeds get a throw off McAteer. Well, that's a good defender's nightmare, I feel. Collymore running straight at you and backing you off, but he does really well. He's good body shape. He sends him wide and then times the tackle very well. Good defending. Leeds regroup again. particularly well at Ellen Road, but Ray Evans uh, is uh, very pleased with the outcome. Played more matches for Liverpool than the, uh, the two rivals in the top three of the Premiership, but they uh, thrive on work here at Anfield, and here's McManaman, Lukic, and he knew the shot wasn't struck as shortly as McManaman would have liked, but he went down as a precaution to make sure there was no chance of it. Uh, inside his right hand post two options he's got here the one is the shot but foul off just to the left of the, sh the screen there just wide of Radaby he did have the option just to slide him in see Fowler peeling away the space to play him in Robbie Fowler's disappointed I think probably more so after the shot well the leads part of the ground isn't packed for uh, understandable reasons, a lot of money, I'm sure, being invested by a majority of their fans on trips to uh, Wembley this coming weekend. For those who are here uh, making plenty of noise, it's the Liverpool uh, supporters who have agreed in support of Collymore. And Gallagher has given the free kick. Well, I've both had plenty to say about the incident. You can see he's well late, Captain, it's no attempt to play the ball. It's good anticipation by Rob Jones to read Kelly's mind. Kelly, yeah, uh, quite prepared to keep it short a second time. Oh. saw that all the way and read it perfectly. Fowler! Oh. Such is his talent. But even with a shot that you might uh, see as speculative from others, you rather expect something sensational to happen. Well, Carlton Palmer's taking ridiculous chance there, playing a ball from right to left across the face of his own 18-yard line. It was quite easily cut off from by Jason McAteer. And again, <laughs> when you've got as many goals as Robbie Fowler this season, there's no surprise to see him pull the trigger at every opportunity. 19 games unbeaten, Liverpool their best run for six years, but it has to continue to produce tangible reward. McManaman. For the feet of Collymore. McAteer. Collymore. Oh my, in danger of uh, committing an offence coming in from the back. But Coming out just in the nick of time. Yeboah, speed. Looking to roll it through for Brian Dean and disguising his intentions quite cleverly. Almost to the point that Dean didn't expect it to come either. In the end, he was flagged offside. But it shouldn't have been. It's as simple as that. He's looking right across the line, right across the back three or four. There's no way he should be offside there. Just need to delay his run. I thought they both made their intentions known here. <laughs> both were pretty physical. And John Pemberton, one of the number of players who has been at Wembley in an FA Cup final. His was with Crystal Palace back in 1990 when he was uh, employed as a right back in those days. As indeed he, he was on Sunday playing for Leeds against Everton, but he's one of these three essential defenders for Howard Wilkinson tonight. 
and his capacity may be to keep pace with Collymore a factor. And him getting a nod over Paul Beasley, who was played against Liverpool 10 days ago. Four. McAllister wants to clip them forward into the front men's feet. It wasn't quite accurate that time. Tussling with Yuboa successfully for Liverpool. And that's there again. McAllister wanted some movement down the right hand side when it wasn't there. He's He's got the calmness to explore other avenues. Not a bit. Trying to get it up to Dean. Yeboah. Tony Yeboah for Leeds. And it's not just a holding operation. I like him in a nutshell. You think there's absolutely no danger. Surrounded by defenders, just drags it past one, drags it past another. And again, he doesn't need a second invitation to. Take a shot at goal, Tony Yeboah. And full cry is McAteer. O'Fala can place it here and has placed it wide. Well, that's the first good chance of the evening. Just on the 15-minute mark. Mark Ford's a little unlucky. And this is the area where if you get one against one, which will happen, and you get past your man, you'll have acres to run into, which is exactly what McAteer does. Mark Ford thinks he's done his job. He opted for precision here, Robbie Fowler. I half fancied him just to nick this in the bottom corner. He really didn't threaten the goal. Ford. McAllister. to use the goalkeeper and oh, I think James was lucky down that first pass to Brian Dean very close to the Leeds number nine now that's the second Cavalier run from Scales I have to say Tony Abo is certainly working hard going back towards his own goal Manager with no complaints about his work rate tonight so far. Right, he's got a couple of goals recently. Nothing to be picked out there. Now Collymore. Up the head of Kelly, McManaman. Comes forward for Leeds. Here's Barnes. Harry Speed got a tackle in. And McAllister tries to fashion the sort of pass of which he is capable for the run of your bar. It's gone out. That's a pity. He was looking for someone to put a run in. Gary McAllister, Tony Avoy just chased 30 yards back towards his own goal. He was ended up having to run 40, 50 yards towards Liverpool's. Just a little unlucky. Well, as he comes out, he's looking for someone. It's such a long run. A lovely pass played in. It just picks up speed off the top. Thought he had it. He gets there just before. Yabara again. Nicely back for four. Showing a bit too much of it to right. But it's Leeds ball again with McAllister. Palmer to join in. McAllister again. Dean back for Yabara. Scales is in the way. McAllister with little spells for Leeds United. Right of it. McAllister. Scales, of course, who began with Leeds a long time ago now, doing the defending. Barnes. Fowler just trying to scuff it on. There wasn't uh, too much of an option there for him. Scales again.
Bolton who had an opportunity if they win tonight to get off the bottom but they're a goal down for David Howells and uh, Tottenham early on Donut Gallagher has the book out and this is by any means a new experience for Mark Ford who's never frightened to go into a tackle he mentioned on the Sunday that he's got the worst disciplinary record at the uh, club and that's uh, perhaps just a misapplied enthusiasm really and he's edging ever closer to a visit to the football association to explain his bad record and now Marketeer has kicked the ball away Donald Gallagher has gone across There's certainly many a referee that would have produced the yellow card for that. Right. A little bit more briskness about the movement up front from Liverpool. Worthington. Caught by McAteer. Rotherby was in the right place to help out. Nigel Worthington, who's... He's such a good, solid citizen for Howard Wilkinson at Sheffield Wednesday and before that, Knox County. Mark Wright almost. Dave Ruddock a problem who solved it by firing it against McAllister and it's ricocheted out of play. You know, when you play the ball about as much as Liverpool do all over the pitch, at times you're always going to risk making a mistake. And another. This is your bower. Good header by Ruddock. Needed to be. Yubara again trying to provide chances for others in the team cause. Worthington. Speed keeping it safe and simple. And he's come back. And that's a knockdown by Scales to be seized on by McManaman. Suddenly you feel anything is possible for Liverpool with McManaman in possession until really it comes to his shooting, which doesn't match the quality of his dribbling with the ball. I think the one thing that they can be confident of for Leeds, Mark, is when they're defending, when they're on the attack, as long as the three centre-backs keep themselves in position, keep the good shape, then you know that you've got Collymore and Fowler. And I think that you know you've got another threat, and that's McManaman. And apart from those three, there's no one. I mean, John doesn't, John Barnes doesn't do it often, Michael Thomas doesn't do it often, neither of them will pass the front very, very often these days. So you know if you keep your back three intact, and you've got, and you've got Ford, Mark and McManaman, man for man, and you've got a fair chance of having the extra defender in place. And the others can just funnel back and then get back at the leisure if you like at times. Colin. Right. Captain Liverpool the last time they won the cup in 1992. Rob Jones uh, played in that game and Steve McManaman as well against the Sunderland, of course, at Wembley. Scales. Again, seeing space and being prepared to move into it. Good recovery by speed. Leeds have got plenty of players back, but it hasn't certainly been uh, in the first half of the first half. A totally negative attitude from Howard Wilkinson's men. When they've got the ball, they've uh, tried to use it purposefully. And there's no one in white giving any impression at the moment of having half an eye on the Coca-Cola Cup final. And it's bounced off right a bit, but then off Barks. Yeboah. Nice knocked down to McAllister by Dean. He's got two to his right. And Yeboah coming now through the centre. And Mark Wright uh, really came in on the slide then and had to give it everything to uh, make sure that he intervened. Had to slow to pick himself up. He has had uh, a niggle with a groin problem. 
of the last couple of weeks. Collymore, a little uh, speculative, but Fowler. Janet Gallagher was uh, very close. And now he's given a free kick to the The actions are good, Mark. Robbie Fowler had no complaint about the referee's decision. Part rather be, he did well at the end. You look to be beaten. But I think if Robbie Fowler had thought there was anything untoward there, we'd have known about it. He just picked himself up and was getting on with it. None of the Liverpool players either made too much complaint about the tackle. You see it again, it spins and he takes good control. And you think he's ahead of him. And then the leg comes out, gets the ball there. Does get Fowler as well, but I think the players told us it all. Ben Collymore and Neil Ruddock having a good look at this. It's Collymore and that's too high. just doesn't threaten. This is one of Stan's poorest. I think he knows it. The last... Nash gives it a chance again. You see the both stretching up for the ball. In fact, Robbie Tvilla does get there before him. You can see that there from this angle. The referee didn't enjoy that. The advantage of the angle that we saw there. Yes. Had he, it may well have been a different decision. It looked from that angle like a let off for Lucas Radovic and Leeds United. <laughs> it's a rematch of Wembley 1965, which was the first FA Cup final for Leeds and the first FA Cup triumph for Liverpool. They've won it four more times since then. McManaman. Crowd tried to help him. <laughs> Warning of Gary Kelly's approach. Thomas. It's not the truest of Anfield pitches. These days, there's been a lot of uh, reconstruction going on, some re-turfing. Still uh, very soft and uh, slightly unpredictable in patches. Liverpool still trying to be true to their passing game. And now uh, they're helped by the referee, who uh, laid it off unwittingly for McManaman. And Collymore crosses, and McAteer might have really embarrassed them at Gallagher there. We saw him late, Nigel Warrington, and just did enough. We were looking around for a, a target for Collymore. And McAteer at the end certainly gave him one. I think we have seen already, Andy, is that the Leeds players selected tonight really believe in the system that Howard Wilkinson's asked them to adopt. You can see McAteer coming in there and just closes the door. Both Radebe and Wellington on right at the last minute. Great skill from Colin Mother. Give up. Underneath right, it's speed. And Gary Speed! Oh, just trying to touch it for Dean when he spun the shot, was blocked, and then Ford can't follow it in. And, uh, now he followed in in the end in a manner which incensed the Liverpool players. And Dermot Gallagher, who's already taken Mark Ford's name. Well, it's his first touch that's the cause of the problem because he gets away from him there and then he just stretches. I think it's a low challenge. I don't think it's a high over the top challenge. He's in low. They both do. He just beats him to the ball. Rob Jones, I think that's a good decision from Dermot Gallagher. Leeds, who had a player sent off here two months ago with uh, disastrous consequences in the Premiership, will not want to repeat tonight. I think that's the man with the coolest head on the pitch at the moment, the referee. And I think he needed it then. The two young players very committed to the tackle on the edge of the box. 
thought both were in fairly for it. Jones was just fractionally. Whoever won the ball, I felt, was going to be the one that came off worst. Well, that was an opportunity. I just wondered if it ever crossed Gary Speed's mind, Mark, as he cut in. Instead of looking for the pass, just to look for the shot himself. And it was Speed who uh, sparked the recovery at Derby back in round three when Leeds were two goals down. That's been uh, easy progress for them into the quarterfinals. And they've dug in Leeds this season in cup competitions, Mark. They showed a lot of good qualities that you need if you're going to succeed in cup football, not necessarily in Leeds football, but certainly in cup football. They've got a lot of the qualities you need. It's been a real contrast, their consistency in the cups and their inconsistency in the league. McManaman. Thomas. Well, it was worth a try. And, uh, a player who scored in that 1992 Cup final triumph against Sunderland. Well, most of Liverpool's shots at goal have been from that sort of range tonight, the opening half hour. They've never really got in where we could see that where you could see the white of John Lukic's eyes, for instance. I think Robbie Furlow's one that he tried to just bend in the bottom corner. And that was about 16 yards, was about the nearest they've been when shooting. I think Leeds won't be unhappy about that. It's going to take a pretty special shot from that sort of distance to open them up. Worthington, you power just offside. Liverpool have gone through the divisions to get this far. Rochdale of the third, Shrewsbury from the second. First division, Charlton, and now putting their wits against the Premiership opposition. The scores have also reflected the increasing degrees of difficulty. After that 7-0 start against Rochdale here in round three. Well, actually, that's probably not indicative of the general balance of the play. But certainly Liverpool threatening uh, John Lukic. Northern Leeds have threatened David James. I think what it showed is what I was saying. Most of Liverpool's efforts have been really 20, 25 yards, Mark, minimum. And maybe that's the reason only one of the shots has actually hit the target. Bucks. <laughs> Barnes given plenty of space. And Another one from that kind of range, and these will feel if it stays that way all night. The chances uh, might favour them to keep Liverpool out. Coming up for you in terms of live football on Sky Sports, the FA Carling Premiership, and Super Sunday from Old Trafford, Manchester United against Tottenham. That's always been a classic fixture, season in, season out. Great imports, of course, as it is at the moment. It's more what's happening down at the bottom for our Monday night football. Southampton against Coventry. Southampton playing tonight against Sheffield Wednesday. Well, I have to say, I don't agree with that decision. I think Carlton Palmer made his mind up that he was going to try and muscle and head this ball. Stan Collymore says, there he goes, I'm standing my ground. Bump. Referee thought otherwise. He's a tough guy. That's two that have bounced off him already tonight. And McAllister above Barks. Ford heading on to Kelly. Shelton McAllister. A bit tight for Leeds. There's a real edge to this, as you would expect, with a place in the FA Cup semi final at stake. Liverpool doing their best to force the pace. Right. 
take on the responsibility. That'll be picking it off. Pass aim for McAteer. Worthington. Pemberton did very well. Didn't panic. And, uh, Liverpool rather unnecessarily, from the Leeds point of view, presented with a throw. from your goal. Scales. Crossover up front between Collymore and Fowler. That's Collymore on the ball for a moment. Not sure it's taking on Barnes by speed, but Liverpool still have it. McManaman to take on his marker four. Well, that was his best effort so far. Tough for them. Leeds are making it really difficult when Liverpool get into these sort of positions. The three strung across the edge of the 18 yard box and making runs difficult for the front two. They're making passes for anyone coming through with the ball difficult to pick out. And that's why it's restricting Liverpool a little. Restricting them to shots from that sort of range. Liverpool showing again they are really prepared to play from deep. Recovered well. Next the man there again. Free kick uh, given to Barnes and quickly taken, leading to Thomas. And hit Collymore and uh, Leeds were. Uh, I think they might have appealed as to whether the free kick was taken in the correct place, but John Gallagher indicated that the game could go on. shots have come from and and where they've gone of range probably that's the furthest out yeah. where they've ended up yeah. nothing has ended up in the back of John Lukic's net he's never really been troubled has he Martin John Lukic 35 minutes gone he's probably faced 10 strikes at goal called upon twice basically tw two straight half he'd be happy if it stays after the next hour and from Dean for your bar Chance for Leeds! Well, that's the threat. That's what they would be looking for. A long ball to that man. Him to win it. Your boy to pounce. For it to be on his left side. He would take that above all others. It sets up beautifully for him. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the power and the strike. It's a little high, but a great deal wide. I just wonder, did he want to go on? He took it early. Never troubled the goalkeeper at all. Well, that's a little warning to Liverpool. And of course, we're on the receiving end of that Tony Yeboah special at the start of the season in the league game at Ellen Road. McAteer. Was forward, having to stretch and strain to get it away at the cost of the corner. And I think that's a good outlet for Liverpool, McAteer. I think he quite fancies it against Nigel Robinson and leads it for the majority of leaving him one against one. Can Liverpool break through from the corner? Thomas, Barnes, took up a good position. Oh, Worthington is in danger of really distracting Lukic. Leeds can see nothing more sinister than another corner. Well, he did distract them. Whether it gets a late call from the goalkeeper, this should really be a bread and butter, co bread and butter collection for a goalkeeper. It's not a great deal of pace in it. Lukic stays on his line. McManaman. Dean and Yeboah both uh, indicating the uh, Leeds commitment. But they haven't cleared, and McManaman skates through. Well, one of the few times he didn't have an option at the edge of the box. As he came in, it really rather closed on him a bit. Tony Yeboa trying to choose fancy. And you always fancy he's going to go back onto his right side. I think he was looking for an option maybe at the edge of the box. You can see across, there's nothing really on for him. 
Forwards defending, as we have seen often enough in the past, can be a curse to their teammates. And Tony Yaboa took an unnecessary risk and nearly paid a heavy price for it. Chelsea in the other replay tonight. Dan Petrescu leading at Selhurst Park. No goals here at Anfield, where Liverpool, of course, have plenty of advantages. But in the Leeds camp, I think they feel that the pressure is on Liverpool. Leeds already at Wembley. With all Liverpool's good form. And Howard Wilkinson has at least got his side into one showpiece of the season. Liverpool still have more work to do to achieve that, to uh, really challenge on in the Premiership, although they're in... Uh, Good shape to make it a three-horse race right down to the wire in the league. Well, I think what that shows us as well, Omar, the action here is that Leeds have, whenever possible, if they happy to push forward and attack themselves. Collymore, past Pemberton. Well, Radovi's now done very well twice when he said to face Stan Collymore, and he did get so again there. He might easily have been tempted to jump in here, and I think Stan Collimer would have quite fancied it. But he stays on his feet and gets an important block. Short corner work by Liverpool. To Barnes. At least by Pemberton. At Selhurst Park, news of penalty failure for Chelsea Dennis Wise his shot saved by Neil Sullivan well, Leeds like most clubs haven't had too many victories at Anfield to cherish down the years but they did win here in the league last season with a goal from Brian Dean this time it's a good tussle Andy <laughs> that's great I mean you can see exactly where the planning has gone into it from Howard Wilson's point of view he's got a great deal of respect for this Liverpool side and he's planned uh, the tactics his tactics his formation to I think to stifle him as much as possible but also for his own team to go forward and when they can Yes, they've really been able to do more of that than they did at home over the 90 minutes. But this is McManaman. There's a risk that he might run them ragged. Fowler trying to unsettle leads with something to surprise them, but it surprised his own teammates as well. Dean. for Jones tries to run Palmer and gets the corner from it the lack of a left foot at times a little conspicuous for Rob Jones but doesn't stop his willingness to make those runs well, he's not the easiest to, to outrun Carlton Palmer just when you think you're past him out comes one of those long legs to poke it away for a corner Meeting the other number five right, McAllister. Well, Macatier isn't an easy player to outrun either, but uh, McAllister tried to do that. And he's made himself a free kick. Speed. All this to earn the right to play Aston Villa semi-final a week on Sunday at Old Trafford semi-final you'll see live on Sky Sports no quarter great arena for a semi-final this is a great arena for a quarter-final replay but the uh, Anfield majority here the Liverpool fans have anything uh, to really warm them on a chilly night in the North West but here's Barnes trying to do just that 
Collymore. Ford is there to confront him, and McManaman comes back his way again, but the challenge is there, as McAllister this time, the corner if it goes, but it doesn't go. Speed, Howard Wilkinson might just be worried as half-time approaches that his team are possibly sitting back really for the first time, or are they being forced back? A little bit of water, I think you can see the, the break at half-time. Not half time yet, and Liverpool trying to come on strong. McManaman, Collymore. Well, Gary Kelly might hope for a change of fortune on this ground. We talked about his sending off in January. Of course, he played for the Republic of Ireland here unsuccessfully in the Euro 96 playoff against Holland. It was in December. Jason McAteer, an opponent tonight, a teammate there. Right. Flag up. into stoppage time at the end of the first half. Well, with the power in the left foot of Neil Ruddock, Jason McAteer setting off uh, with plenty of hope that something might come. But nothing has really happened for Liverpool to this point. The Leeds tactics working well. Liverpool restricted to efforts from long range. On a night when we have to have a finish, maybe extra time, maybe even penalties. At half-time at Anfield in the FA Cup quarter-final replay, it's Liverpool nil, Leeds United nil. Well, it's a cagey old tussle. No goals at half-time at Anfield. 12 attempts, though, from Liverpool. Only two on target. Two from Leeds, and they haven't hit the target yet. Four corners, all of them in the last 15 minutes of that half. All four to Liverpool. Ford in the book. And the action areas, well, dominated by Liverpool. Possession, 58% to Liverpool. Ball in play, just over 30 minutes. Just over the half-hour mark. Aston Villa, of course, are waiting for the winners in the semi-final. With us tonight, their skipper Andy Townsend and Gareth Southgate is here as well. You said you felt it would be tense, a little bit tight, Gareth. And KG, as I said, have you seen anything to surprise you? Not really, no. Um, the only thing I thought Carlton Palmer might play in midfield, but uh, Mark Ford has, has gone man for man with Steve McManaman, and he's got to be a little bit careful in the second half because he put, picked the booking up early on, and uh, he was, he was all, I thought he was going to go off for the foul at, at the Liverpool end. Of course, Leeds came here underdogs, Andy, but you, you said you're sitting watching that. The longer this goes, the more I fancy them. Do you still? Definitely. I mean, I think they can take a lot of the heart from that first 45 minutes. You know, the Liverpool will be going towards the cop end now when they always kind of do get ahead of steam up a little bit more that way. But uh, no, Leeds are very much in this game. And they've restricted Liverpool to opportunities in the main from distance, but maybe that would have been different had Robbie Fowler taken this opportunity, Andy. Would you have expected him to score on most occasions with something like this? Yes, yeah, certainly. Jason McAteer, great run. Again, just, just getting the ball in the box, and it drops kindly there for Robbie on his left foot, and you would really fancy him there. Um, and he's just not that one wide, but uh, that was about the best chance of the match. Very shortly after, there were calls for a penalty from, well, I think, stands in the main. Nothing from Robbie Fowler. Did you think this was, Gareth? No, I didn't. Uh, I, I thought he slipped more than anything, but I think if we, if, as we see it, Radaby just gets his toe to the ball. Oh, maybe he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No. He gets his, <laughs> he yeah. gets his foot to Robbie Fowler's. Yeah. You see the all-seeing eye. <laughs> was it a penalty? Well, now you've seen that. Well, I mean, it should have been, yeah. Um, but, I mean, the referee, it's a difficult... I don't know if he was that well-placed for it. My initial reaction was that it wasn't a penalty. I but, think yours uh, was, Andy, as well. But having seen that, yeah, no doubt, is Yeah, definitely. Robbie definitely made contact there first. I don't know how much contact there actually was between 
the two players, really. Um, but uh, no, I think it would have been a bit harsh to give that one. Oh, do you? Uh, at the other end, Leeds' best chance, arguably Tony Yaboa. Had David James been beaten with this? Bearing in mind what beating back at Allen Road, he'd have been very disappointed, wouldn't he? Definitely, yeah. I mean, Should he have gone on? Should he have hit the target? I think he could have done, but, I mean, Tony Yaboa, that's that's him all over, you know. He, he's we, We've seen him time and time again smash them straight in the top corner. So, uh, yeah, I think, on reflection, he might think, again, he could have perhaps took that one down, teed it up a little bit better on his left peg and then had a had a wallop. But uh, he's trying to take it early, and, as, as I said before, you know, he's, uh, he's liable to bang them in. OK, at Old Trafford, incidentally, tonight, we've said we'll have goals from there as soon as there is anything to show you. Let's have a look. Arsenal, the visitors, of course. Two goals or more will take Manchester United back to the top tonight. An early opportunity for Ryan Giggs, and that was an important challenge, wasn't it? From Martin Keown. Roy Keane. Oh, it's hit the post, that. Who scored against, was it Newcastle, from a similar angle? And Andy Cole, who keeps getting in positions to score goals. Not having the rub of the green in there, Andy's oh. off. Look at that. Keown again. <laughs> they know what they need tonight, Manchester United. It's a win, first of all. Two or more to go top. And they're plugging away there against Arsenal. So it's goalless at the moment at Old Trafford. Elsewhere, on a big night for football, in the other quarter-final replay at Selhurst Park, Wimbledon nil, Chelsea won. It's a later score. There was a delay in the kickoff to allow fans to get in. Dan Petrescu, the scorer, and Neil Sullivan has since saved a penalty from Dennis Wise. In the Premiership, Bolton nil, Tottenham won, David Howells. Manchester United nil, Arsenal nil, Southampton nil, Sheffield Wednesday won, Mark de Grysa. And back at Selhurst Park, Wimbledon have equalised. Just. It's 1-1 in the other replay and of course they both have to finish tonight if required there will be extra time here and maybe penalties goalless at half time as Liverpool unbeaten in 19 going against Leeds United already at Wembley this coming weekend and they've got their eyes on the other semi-final place against Villa more from Anfield when we come back Just a reminder, in the other quarter-final replay tonight at Selhurst Park, it's Wimbledon 1, Chelsea 1. Don Goodman with the equaliser for Wimbledon. Dan Petrescu for Chelsea. And Neil Sullivan saved a penalty from Dennis Wise. Here at Anfield, in our live game, Liverpool 0, Leeds United 0. Aston Villa waiting for the winners. We're with Andy Townsend and Gareth Southgate. Gareth, is there anything Liverpool haven't done in that opening 45 that they should have done? I think Leeds have made it very difficult for them. I mean, Worthington and Gary Kelly have both pushed on to the Liverpool fullbacks, um, and Jason McIntyre and Rob Jones are normally a good supply line for them. Um, Liverpool's front two are a bit quieter than, than they normally are, and, and John Barnes is a bit quieter, and I would imagine Roy Evans will get them zipping the ball around a bit more in the second half, because uh, they don't seem to have the movement that certainly they showed against us when we played here a couple of weeks ago. So having been restricted as they have to, to long range attempts, you think the two wing backs, as we've come to know them, should be doing a little bit more than they have? Well, I think they can only do as much as Leeds allow, but I think, I mean, they'll, they'll certainly be encouraged to push forward more because I think the Leeds players will just follow them if they do. Liverpool look happy enough, Andy? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, as I say, they'll be a wee bit disappointed the way that's gone the first half, but, uh, you know, they're a very capable side. And they've got players that can score a goal out of nothing. So, uh, you know, they're always in with a ch chance for people like that. You were on Liverpool at the start. Gareth, are you still? Yeah, but uh, it's looking good for the extra time I'm looking for as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're desperate for that, aren't you? All the way tonight, the longer the better. You've, you, I mean, you've changed your allegiance to touch it, Andy, haven't you? Well, I, you know, I mean, Leeds have, uh, have, have done very well that half. I thought they, you know, have frustrated uh, Liverpool quite a lot. And uh, so they keep it going, yeah. I'll tell you maybe. what, I can see him maybe sneaking one. All right, let's rejoin Andy Gray and Martin Tite. Thanks, Richard. Since Liverpool last won the Cup, they have gone out each year here at Anfield. Those shot home defeats to Bolton and Bristol City, and a year ago, they were sunk in the sixth round by Spurs and by Jurgen Klinsmann. But they do attack the top end in the second half. Fresh memories of being... 0-0 here with Chelsea at the weekend and uh, asserting themselves in the second period it's also 0-0 at half time at Old Trafford in that key premiership game Manchester United and Arsenal 
Well, John Scales was our guest partner on Sunday. And I was speaking to him about the Wimbledon game in particular. And he said the one thing we learned that night was the word patience. It sounds strange coming from someone playing in Liverpool. We felt they were a little impatient. They obviously learned that and used it against Chelsea when they were 0-0 at half-time at the weekend. And I think that's something they'll have to be again tonight. Very, very patient. This leads say they're well drilled at the moment. They're frustrating Liverpool. And it just looks like it's going to take an error from someone at the back in a white shirt or a piece of magic really to break the deadline. McAllister. Yabar. Ryan Dean is there for Leeds. Yabar wants to go his own way and uh, turn back into trouble. Barks. McMahon. Genuine openings to this point, few and far between. The best coming to uh, Robbie Fowler, who took aim and was off target. Cross from Collymore. Akatia got to it and hit right a bit. And the ball is spun behind with the fans in the top stand appealing for a handball against Radebe, but a corner. Surely the correct outcome is Dermot Gallagher. Waits for it to be taken by McAteer. Ford with no one forward to clear it too. So he plays a little give and go for himself, but at least that's given the others a chance to shape up properly. I think that's what happens at times. That would what we saw from Liverpool, Collymore crossing the ball, when either Collymore or Fowler go wide to do that, and they just lack penetration, the bodies from midfield catching up the other striker in the box, it was left to McAteer that time. This is Ruddock, and Ruddock almost getting it stuck under his feet, he has done, it's Fowler, and it's Lukic. To the relief of the South African Lukic Ruddock. Well, I thought it might take an error, and that was almost it. I think he was caught between leaving this, and Fowler coming in behind him and collecting it, which he might well have done. And I think he felt then he had to collect it. He never looked comfortable, never looked in control. But again, he made life difficult for Robbie Fowler. No one thing has changed in the second half, and that's the level of the noise. The home support trying to roar Liverpool into the semi-finals of the FA Cup. Pemberton. Well, that's a free kick in my book. It really is. Neil Ruddock, when the ball was played, just didn't look at the ball. He had a turn and had a look at Tony Abor and just put himself in his way. And I, I would certainly have given a free kick there. You have to be pretty burly to knock your bow over, and the Ruddock did that conclusively. Barks. Collingwood, and he gets a foot hit. Deep. They try and do a Collymore to Liverpool, and they're moving away. And he found his legs being clipped, and he's got a free kick. Concerned about the marking on Collymore as his side have a free kick, a loss of concentration from his defenders. That's exactly what he's concerned about. You know, it's amazing sometimes people go to sleep, Mark, but not with Howard Wilkinson around. I well, obviously expect leads uh, Gary McAllister to score here, but he's uh, flipped it on towards Yuboa and he follows up himself. Planted forward by Palmer. Jones, McMahon and Rob Jones running on. Here he is, Collymore to the left. Leads very quickly, getting players around the man in possession. McManaman, Jones. Still waiting. <laughs> I'm sure you all know what Andy's referring to. Rob Jones without a goal to his 
name in Liverpool's colours, playing I think his 206th game <laughs> the senior team tonight. But there seems a little bit more urgency in Liverpool's play at the beginning of the second half. I thought they played the game at a pace first half that, that suited Leeds, allowed them to funnel players back comfortably. Fowler! It must have been close to being offside. I know the ball travelled a long way. The flag stayed down. There was just enough pace on it to suit Lukic to get it in. But he makes a run across. He's played there. You can see he's not offside. You know, and for all the good football that we talk about, it's taken a ball of some 60 yards or so to almost bring the opening. Worthington. Finding himself well forward in pursuit of the ball and getting the ball. And as uh, much a collector's item as a goal from Rob Jones oh, just from Nigel see. Worthington's right foot <laughs> <laughs> one doesn't want to be disrespectful but what are we saying about Liverpool Mark? it just seems a bit more urgency in their play and I do think they have to do diff different things get other players forward make runs from deeper just to unsettle the three central defenders who for the majority of the first half looked really comfortable McManam using Barnes as a decoy. It's too obvious from right, particularly for Pemberton. shadow off they go again it's uh, Ian Kelly who intervened Fox Jones McManaman trying to pass it away from Mark Ford who stuck out a foot McManaman uh, gets through Ford's uh, challenge that time he certainly looked the most likely Steve McManaman whether he's going to score or whether he's going to create something but he's looked the most positive of all the attackers on show tonight. Always looked a threat when he's got the ball. But you're right when you said earlier about his shooting at times. It really does let him down. He gets in some great positions. Another lecture perhaps from Howard Wilkinson to the back line. Max Blood. But here's McAllister. Well, uh, Kelly's out of position. Ford's filling in at right back. Fowler coming back. Reflecting the urgency that Liverpool want to put into their play in the second half. Now he's charging forward as. Robert looks to play him in again as he so nearly did a couple of minutes ago. Collie Moore. McAteer. One of those awkward bubbles in the queue tonight. Jones. And tries again. Find the key to the door. Well, it's a repeat performance, really. I tell you what, though, Martin, if they keep allowing them to do that, what they're doing from the left hand side, I think they're making a mistake, is they're sending him in field like that. And that's sending Steve McMahon went on to very much his strongest side. You wouldn't guess from that shot, admittedly. But that is his strongest side. And if they keep sending him inside time after time, and there's a chance he's just going to connect with one of those from that side and make them pay. I would always send them on his left side, send them wide on that side and keep them wide on the near side as well. Kelly pushing right on Rob Jones on the far side. Wellington uh, doing the same towards McAteer, although McAteer has the throw. And then it's an unfair turn by Fowler. Free kick to Leeds. Ten minutes into the second half. Nil-nil. Not a goal to show in this tie. 90 minutes at Ellen Road. 55 minutes here at Anfield. 
locked together, Liverpool and Leeds United. And they can't stay that way. Two years ago, you'd be wondering where they'd stage the second replay, wouldn't you? <laughs> Those days have gone. Peter Fowler. And now he's gone left. The ball just gets to him. Prep to him, really. Straight to Worthington, though. D. And the back is power. That's a bit of progress down the touchline for Leeds. Mark Wright, who's been in tremendous form, recognised by Terry Venables. We haven't heard the news today. Five Liverpool players in England squad for next week's international against Bulgaria. And one or two near misses as well, like Michael Thomas. He's uh, on the ball here through the legs of Yubar. Fowler. Polymore assessing what's on in the centre. Put it out of foot, McManaman. With the left foot, there's time! It's done the trick! Steve McManaman scores for Liverpool! Well, what a strike. Time after time tonight on his strong side. He's hit two quality shots. And probably at the time when the keeper didn't expect it, he pulls a rabbit out of the heart. This is a magnificent strike. They actually think they've done the hard part, Leeds, and they've cleared the danger as Collymore cuts in. But the ball breaks in here and just shifts it onto his left foot. One touch there. Ah, that's blistering power. That's goalkeeper's side. And John Lukic just doesn't see it. It's past Captain Palmer. It's past John Lukic. And it's the power alone that's beaten the goalkeeper. 12 minutes into the second half this quarter-final replay finally a goal to show between Liverpool and Leeds Steve McManaman well will that mean a rethink for Howard Wilkinson Fowler Gallagher playing the advantage, uh, Liverpool in possession. Howard being uh, firm in his play again. McManaman's away again. Collymore coming in. Leeds are being stretched. They've been... John Lukic has been beaten. Will the Leeds spirit be broken? Well... But Manwin just pops it off and makes a run behind. He's looking for it. You can see he wants it. There's certainly an area for Stan Collymore to play to. Back to Steve McManaman. He looked to fizz it across the six-yard box. This is a big five or ten minutes for Leeds. They got the bit in between their teeth. Right at the start of the second half, they looked as if they were up for the job over the I did say McManaman looked the one most likely. He's always looked the brightest. Has it always gone his way? He certainly went all his way with that shot. Great strike. McManaman leading forward. Now, uh, wins a corner. Mark Ford. He might just be coming off now. This is 18-year-old Andy Gray. Whose uncle Eddie played in three FA Cup finals for Leeds United, was a winner in 72. The only time that Leeds have won the FA Cup. And Mark Ford, who's pluckily tried to rein in Steve McManaman. Uh, Andy Gray comes on to defend in the corner. to 
for Tottenham now. Will Fox with that second goal to add to the earlier one from David Howells. To have a look at that again. What a wonderful strike! This is almost goalkeeper's view of it. Shifts it to the left now. Does Carlton Palmer block his view? Well, he may a little, but you can see even then the slight swerve in the ball. And that's what took it past Lukic. That with the power. Speed. Well, he finally found the range, Steve McManaman. After several attempts, but they're nowhere near the class that he produced with the scoring shot. Colin Moore. Oh. It's a complete slip by Fowler. Well, nothing for it now, I think. Normally I'd sit here, Martin, and say, well, there's no need to panic, no need to... You can wait, you can clear your heads and then start to push forward and ask some questions. But I think in a match such a, like this, you've just got to go for it now. You've got to start taking that little bit of a chance now. Even with half an hour to go, Leeds have got to push more men forward now in the attacking areas. Well, certainly uh, Andy Gray for forward is uh, a switch and emphasis towards attack. Gray starting on the uh, right-hand side in the wide position. And behind your bow at the moment. Thomas, and of course, with Ford off, the uh, shackles well and truly off McManaman. Holly Moore, there was a deflection on the cross, which in the end uh, suited the goalkeeper. There's a fair chance this game will just open wide now. We'll find someone attack, then another attack, because the game will get stretched. but I don't think that's going to spare him. He's uh, back with a booking. No, I think that's exactly right. It's not. You see he's late. He certainly catches Tony at I don't think he can have any arguments with that one. Although he will have. And Leeds have a free kick. Now, uh, it's Brian Dean. Now, uh, brave Gary Speed will feel he can beat. With his uh, cheek ball. He was in there. Your bow is in there. So too is Gray, and it's seized right by him by James. And Fowler is a bit fortunate. And then, uh, having got the ball in behind Pemberton. And he thought he might get away. Pemberton brings him down. It's another booking. Well, there's the advantage of a bad first touch. Yes, <laughs> exactly what it was by Robbie Fowler. <laughs> he looks to take this under control. Wow. And after John Pemberton gets space to get that down, he doesn't. And he thinks, oh, no. I think he knew he's getting booked for that. Referee's no option. Had the free kick away, but Barnes is quickly on the scene. Fowler, Collymore, some gaps opening up. Worthington struggling, Collymore's in behind him. Stan Collymore, and Lukic does very well indeed. What a great save that was. Needed a strong arm. This is brilliant play from Collymore. Doesn't panic, slants it across the goalkeeper. For someone so tall to get down so quickly. That's a great save. Manaman. 
Fowler. Steve McManaman gets beyond Kelly, or thought he had, but Kelly knew what he was doing. Almost uh, around the spot where he committed the foul on Rob Jones that led to his red card here a couple of months ago. Very clean in his defending then against McManaman. McManaman gets there to flick it on for Fowler. Well, the expectation is so great. Colin Ross had a pocket on I think probably right. It's a poor shot. But once he's through there, Stan Collymore just held his position. And once he brought it on to his right side, this he was calmed in. And he just says it, pokes it, look at Collymore, right in the D. Set his strike part. Oh, why didn't he just feed it back to me? Well, that's the game now. That's the game we've got. It's going to be Leeds now who are going to have to probe and push forward. Oh, it bounced Roddick's header back to Dean off Thomas. Speed! Yeah, that was, it's a long way out. It's always rising, always wide. Keepers never troubled. I just wonder though, Martin, how long it will be before we see Thomas Brawley. I know he hasn't had the best of starts, but it's four and a half million pounds worth of striker sitting there. And the team's 1-0 down, approaching the last 20 minutes of the match, and you need to score. Well, Tottenham uh, warming up for their trip to Old Trafford, three up at Bolton. Chris Armstrong's got the third. It's still on the other at Old Trafford tonight. Uh, the other North London club are holding Manchester United. Yes, I just wonder what Thomas Brolin might think about a teenager coming on in preference to him when the Leeds find themselves in need of an injection of attacking power. Palmer. And he would have done with Gary Kelly. He's pushing him into a more central midfield role. In amongst John Barnes, Michael Thomas. So it's an alien area for him. I just wonder if it, he might even be thinking how it, he can go 4 4 2 and just push Calton Palmer forward. Again, something to give them more thrust in the middle third and the last third. Fowler. And those uh, risks have got to be taken by Leeds. Uh, may well allow further avenues for Liverpool. Worthington clears. Scales misjudges. It's a turn of hair. Bounce. Mariannis is now on Leeds to uh, try and get there if they can. Liverpool uh, amongst the best in the business if you let them pass it around. has been a uh, great influence late on in matches in this cup run. They need him again. And here's Fowler. Gives it to Collymore this time. Barnes. McManaman. <laughs> Who cares, he says to himself, I've smashed one in top corner. I've given the side the lead. said we're behind at Derby 2-0 down uh, in round three. They were all down uh, in their fifth round replay to Port Vale. <laughs> up to the uh, Coca-Cola Cup final by being uh, shrinking violets in knockout competitions. But, uh, they've been outgunned in terms of the shots on goal, but they haven't been uh, killed off yet by Liverpool because of their lack of accuracy. Collymore, the second goal for Liverpool, and they feel that uh, will give them some security in their passage into a semi-final. Worthington, neatly down to Gary McAllister. 
Her at the moment is offside. And, uh, carelessly knocked away by Ruddock. Kelly. Substantially this time, and more successfully. Barnes, McManaman, Fowler, back to Fowler from Barnes, and it's got to McAteer by a timeless tackle. McManaman against Kelly. Moore lets him go. in this sort of room. Scales with half an eye on your bower and concentration still on the ball. I did well, rather closed up for Gary McArthur. Inside the last 20 minutes unless Leeds can find an equaliser to send it into extra time. Marketeer. Hasn't been vintage Liverpool. Been able to really turn it on, and that's a compliment to Leeds. Fowler. Back to McManaman. He's in again. Steve McManaman single-handedly is steering Liverpool towards the last four of the FA Cup, and that was vintage. That's great, great football from those two youngsters. What a space, beautiful. Little pass. Now watch McManaman. He, he's passed it and he's away. He's totally left the defender for dead. And once again, when he needed it, he had the coolness to really make it pay that time. And I think that just about kills leads off. Super work goal and a great finish. The first one was all about power and pace. And that one was all about placement and accuracy. Well, a goal uh, to warm the heart of Roy Evans, to warm the heart of Terry Venables as well. There was a time when Englishmen in a Liverpool shirt were few and far between. Well, nine of this 11 born in England, plus Rob Jones and John Barnes, both, of course, England internationals. semi-final against Aston Villa before that semi-final of course it's back to the FA Carling Premiership uh, for you on Sky Sports this weekend Manchester United against Tottenham it's uh, our Super Sunday we start at 3 o'clock and on Monday night Southampton and Coventry points so precious for those two clubs join us at 7 on Monday night played Everton in the 1986 FA Cup final. Steve McManaman was supporting Everton. <laughs> He's 
allegiances have changed since he's uh, come into football himself and what an asset he is to the Liverpool Football Club. Already at a very tender age, collecting an FA Cup in his medal four years ago. Fowler's offside here. Uh, Everton fans have turned out to be pretty good Liverpool players. Ian Rush, <laughs> Robbie Fowler, Steve <laughs> McManaman. Tell me about it. I can remember any Liverpool fan didn't do too badly in my team. Yes. Right. <laughs> Colin Mott. Oh, Frogs off right a bit. Put behind by Pemberton. Is it time for this when I, I sometimes get a little confused about things? When you're defending a corner and you're 2-0 down and you take every single player back into your own 18-yard box, I'd stick a couple up halfway line. You need a goal. Right. This is right a bit. Because invariably that happens, Matt. You win the ball and it's just coming straight back at you. Because you have no one up there. Patrick, he, uh, he got one was it, uh, a couple of seasons ago, and they, did you take one off him? I, I'm afraid I, I am one of them, <laughs> one of the guilty party, when he tried to claim that cross that he was aiming in. <laughs> yes. <laughs> outside the penalty area as well. And to this point, the decision uh, of man of the match, I don't think, is going to tax you too greatly. No, I don't think so. Kelly. Gray. by Leeds, one goal back, chance to play on Liverpool nerves, moment. Liverpool players will be feeling that they are in the semi-final, still with the 12 minutes to go, Barnes, past Pemberton, this is uh, old style John Barnes, and another save for Lucas from, uh, from that man, McManaman. I think he was desperate for it to sit right from George for a shot. I think he fancied a bit of glory himself, but it just ran out. Carlton Palmer put the block on and he ended up having to ship it to McManaman. Of course, when John Barnes played against you in that 84 final for Watford, he was playing more like Steve McManaman than playing tonight. Yeah, he was about a left winger in those days, wasn't he? Yeah. Worthington's pass, interesting you bought. Safety first from David James, it wasn't very pretty. Well, that's a big win for Sheffield Wednesday. That's an even bigger game next Monday night. It's a lovely one too. And watch Gary Kelly who's marking him. He gets attracted to the ball. And that's fatal because McManaman's in behind him. And that's a lovely slot. Cross the goalkeeper. Ness was in the bottom corner. Super finish. And the pat on the back to Robbie Fowler. The creator. 
so often the single-minded striker with the 30 to his name you have to have that kind of uh, dedication selfishness if you like the best kind of selfishness in football to win games for your team but as uh, shown here on the day he's been called into the England squad by Terry Venables but there's more to his game than just goal scoring Here's McAteer. Let's just keep ball at the moment, Mark. We're just enjoying this. 2 0 up. Pass, move, pass, and move. And you uh, can only make the game look as easy as Liverpool are doing by working hard off the ball. You've got to pass it to someone. And there's uh, McAteer. Oh, well, 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 they've all gone with Fowler. And then Pemberton gives away the free kick. Lovely football that was. Kept the ball for ages. Nice slow tempo. Suddenly, Fowler injects a good move, and uh, McAteer just strides into it. Just injected a lovely bit of pace into the game. Well, Fowler ain't scored. Collymore ain't scored. It's within both the ranges. I don't seem to win a competition for who's going to take <laughs> it. Robbie Fowler already has a certain amount of seniority that a 20-year-old. <laughs> Collymore has a word. But it's Fowler! Oh, that's why he takes them! Red Hot Robbie does it again for Liverpool. 3-0. Well, I don't know if he took John Lukic by surprise or whether it was a deflection that took him away from it. He went in pretty central from this angle. Goalkeeper set. Certainly not nestling in the top corner. But he does what you have to do, what I always say in those situations. If you hit the target, you've got a chance. It's pretty central. Goalkeeper will be disappointed he hasn't got a cross for that. But Robbie Fowler doesn't care. He's hit the target and has been rewarded for doing so. And Liverpool can make their plans conclusively now for the FA Cup semi-final against Aston Villa. Oh, and great! Could have retrieve something for Howard Wilkinson's team but David James keeping his concentration rather better than those in front of it uh, small consolation F-O-W-L-E-R 31 for Robbie Fowler that equals his uh, season's total last season Pemberton now News for you from Old Trafford. Manchester United against Arsenal. This happened a few moments ago. Eric Cantona. Oh, look at that. Ha, ha, ha. Well, 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 he's done it again. Would you believe it? Here's Fowler for Liverpool. starting to look a little similar to what happened here in the league when uh, it all went wrong late on for Leeds United and Liverpool finished with five and we've got uh, just over five minutes left to uh, match that I just impression this Liverpool team are learning all about what the Liverpool teams of that 20 year spell knew about I mean, I think this, that right, at times it hasn't been a vintage performance, but they've been patient, they've stuck with what they know, what they believe in. And yet again, so many times I've seen it in the past, that go right for them late in the game or in the second half, it's exactly what's happened again tonight. Well, they've match leads, battling qualities, and then outstripped them. And it's come to scoring power and individual contribution. Speed. Worthington, speed lets it run, McAllister is in there. 
To the left is Tony Yaboa. Centre back Steve McManaman heading away. McAllister, Yuboa. Barnes. McManaman. Barla. behind Ruddock Thomas filling in but it's McAllister's ball Gray for company prepared to attack Scales in his coltish way trying to carve something out all academic rendered academic by Robbie Fowler yeah, I mean, it's a decent enough strike, Mark. You can see it's, it's hardly top corner. I think John Lukic, when he sees that back, he'll be a little disappointed. He hasn't got a cross to that. Almost gives it up, doesn't he? Well, the extra zip, perhaps, of uh, the top end. We said at half time, as it happened here on Saturday when Chelsea were the opposition in the Premiership, sorted out in the second half by Liverpool. McAllister, the bar. Here's Rutt. Looking right for Fowler. And there's plenty for Liverpool to feel good about on this particular day. Well, tonight, and a chance in a week's time to go on the stage for the country. Kelly. England against Bulgaria at Wembley in a week's time. You can't get along to watch it yourself. You can see it live on Sky Sports, of course. Or Robbie Fowler play. Scott Sellers, so we're not over yet at Burnham Park, but it is here at Anfield. Man of the match, Andy, uh, can you make your formal statement? I think you could probably name man of the match tonight. In fact, most people at home will probably pick up and the fact he's involved in it yet again. And quite simply, number 17 in a red shirt. He is, my little woods. Man of the match, Stephen Manley. Thomas! Tom, all you shout, he's laughing at him. <laughs> I tell you what, I wish four years ago he'd have hit that shot against Villa as poorly as that, I tell you. He rifled into the back of the net from about that range. Six round of the FA Cup. Anfield and Liverpool, of course, went on to win it. The, uh, last year they were in the semi finals. this year shortly be confirmed. Now we're still uh, wanting more through the middle. Liverpool keeping it close at the back. Leeds played out. Howard Wilkinson did his best to try and bridge the gap with uh, a formation that certainly for the first half frustrated Liverpool. I think the question was always going to be, Mark, all right, majority it was for containment, to frustrate. But what would happen when they lost the first goal? Quite simple, they didn't have the answer. 
Liverpool are in the semi-finals. Two goals from Steve McManaman. The second set up by Robbie Fowler, who then curled in a free kick to really emphasise the margin of victory. The 20th game of this great unbeaten run takes them into the last four for the 20th time in their history. It's Aston Villa at Old Trafford, a week on Sunday. Leeds, of course, go off to their own date with Villa at Wembley this Sunday, reflecting partly about tonight, but also, I suspect, about the home advantage that wasn't utilised to the full ten days ago. Liverpool still in the chase for the championship, of course, with a clash here with Newcastle still to come. That was originally scheduled for semi-final weekend. So on two main fronts, Liverpool very much involved. The first side this season to beat Leeds in a domestic cup tie. It was a stern tussle for the best part of an hour. But once Steve McManaman had scored and then Robbie Fowler became an even more dangerous sidekick to the man of the match, the result really little doubt. And the cop heroes are just that again. They've sorted out this sixth round replay against Leeds United by three goals to nil. Let's join Nick Collins. Thanks, Martin. Uh, I've got Steve McManaman and Robbie Fowler down here. Congratulations. Steve, was it a case of being patient? Yeah, I think so. We, we learned after the first game at Ellen Road that we have to be patient. We, if the fans, our fans came on Saturday against Chelsea, they knew that we were patient. We got the result in the end. We've done exactly the same today. And one with the left foot and one with the right foot today. Yeah, I had about 58 shots today, so um, <laughs> it's about time one of them went in. Robbie? Did you feel that Liverpool needed to step up a gear in that second half? Um, no, we just have to be patient, as, as Stevie's just said. But, um, so yeah, I think, you know, once, um, I think we were, when we got the first goal, there was only one winner, really. So, no, we done quite well in the second half. Two great goals from Steve. <laughs> and uh, not a bad day for you, either. A, a great goal from a free kick and being called up for the England squad for the first time. Yeah, I mean, it's pleasing to be called up, and I mean... It's making me laugh now. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's just another you know, goal. It's just capped off a great day, really. I mean, I had good sleep this afternoon. Me and him never sleep during the afternoon, so both of us had a sleep and we both scored goals. We had a sleep for the first time. Because we're roomies, aren't we? <laughs> I told him to tell me one of his goals and uh, fell asleep quite easily, actually. <laughs> well, he's got quite a few goals to tell you about, hasn't he, this season? Yeah, um, marvellous. Great news today for him. Um, we'll be down there, there's five of us and righty as well, so uh, we're looking forward to going down, barring injuries. Well, let's show you your goals to start with, Steve. Starting off with, with the first one, talk us through this one. Who's that? I think it was Rob Jones just um, passed it to me. I've got a, an ounce of space, and um, I don't know how that went in. <laughs> but it did. <laughs> the second one, obviously, uh, coming a few minutes later, a crucial time for you, really, with that, wasn't it? Yeah, um, me and Robbie... You know, we've always been told to do one twos. Sometimes that's how to unlock the defence. And um, maybe that was a bit lucky. It, it went through the legs there. But um, he, well, he meant it. He just said, and it was incredibly lucky. <laughs> incredibly lucky. Now the third goal of the free kick looked very casual. Was it meant to look that way? Um, that just went. I mean, we've had a few free kicks, but they've all been on sort of stand side. So I mean, I've just hit the ball and aimed you know, to score, and I have. So I'm pleased with it. So, Aston Villa in the uh, semi-final. You've both scored against Villa, of course, uh, in league games. How, how do you fancy your chances in the semi? It's going to be a hard game in the league game. We'll um, be Villa twice, say. But um, I think cup football is totally different on both sides. We sort of want to win more on the day and that. So, and it's a hard game and we'll be looking forward to it. Steve, your thoughts? We've got, uh, we've got a couple of Aston Villa players up in the studio. We've got Andy Townsend uh, and uh, Gareth Southgate. Have you got a message for them? No, no, um, <laughs> no, we're looking forward to it as they are. Um, they came to our ground a, a, a bit under strength, really, but I don't know. I think they'll all be fit for um, the following Sunday at Old Trafford. I mean, it's on a neutral ground, so it's anyone's game, really. Well, it should be a great match. One last, uh, one last chore for you, Robbie. Would you present Steve McManaman with a Littlewoods Man of the Match, no, bottle of champagne? I, I want it. Oh, well done, mate. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Well, well played, well thank done, you. thank you. He's worked hard there. That was tougher than Dalgleish post-match. Well done, Nick.
When we come back, an update from Old Trafford, where United are leading now by a goal to nil. We'll also have the thoughts of Andy Townsend and Gareth Southgate and all the night's other scores. So it's Villa against Liverpool in one semi-final. As we look at these match facts, I can tell you that Michael Dubery has scored for Chelsea in the other quarter-final replay now. 2-1 to Chelsea with something like 10 minutes left. What about Liverpool tonight? 3-1 it is now to Chelsea. Mark Hughes has just scored, so it looks as though they're going through to play Manchester United. Here tonight, 27 attempts from Liverpool, 11 on target, and they won it by three goals to nil. Brodick went into the book. Pemberton and Ford from Leeds United. In terms of the action areas, dominated by Liverpool first half, you'd expect to see that in the second as well. Possession 58% across the 90 minutes. Yep, second half, Liverpool's two. And waiting for them in the semi-finals, Aston Villa, of course, Andy Townsend and Gareth Southgate are with us tonight. Is there one word that would best sum up that performance tonight, Andy? Um, awesome. Yeah, pretty much <laughs> so, I think, yeah. I mean, the second half, as I say, once they go, start getting towards that cop end and... Once they scored the first one, uh, I think the result was inevitable then. You know, I couldn't see Leeds getting back in it at all. And, uh, and after the second one, it's, uh, as I say, they, once, they, uh, once they get a, a taste for victory, you know, they really go for it. And it was always going to be a case of how many. What did you make of it, Gareth? Calculated? Yeah, convincing performance from Liverpool. I think there was no doubt once they got the first that uh, Leeds only natural. I think their minds probably swung to Sunday. A few of them probably started to save their legs a little bit. Um, but Steve McManaman was quite outstanding, I thought, mm. and uh, he's so difficult to pick up in the role that he plays. Well, we'll get a, a reaction from the boys and look back on the goals in a moment or so. We'll also get up to date with what's going on at Old Trafford, but right now let's hear from Roy Evans, who's with Nick Collins. Well, Roy, congratulations. What kind of things did you say at half-time and it was nil-nil and the game looked fairly tight? Well, we had to keep our patience and that's, uh, you know, We've done that for, for many years, and uh, okay, we've got fans here now, which probably, again, we need to re-educate some of the younger ones. Um, you can't just go ahead and steamroll teams. Uh, Leeds came here to make it really diff uh, difficult. Uh, they did that, but eventually we wore them down, and uh, in the end, we've got what we deserve. We saw your reaction to Steve McManaman's first goal. A wonderful strike, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, and Steve's been you know, man to man marked all night. He's zagged the kid all over the place. He's got himself free a few times. Um, and eventually he was going to get a chance and uh, he had a few shots didn't at the Tigers and eventually he stuck with him with his left peg I think so we're happy with that. From your point of view though presumably very pleased the fact that you didn't just win 1-0 but you kept going and getting better and better as the game went on. Well cup ties to be fair if you win you know by 1-0 you, you get to the next round which is, uh, is, is nice but I think um, the way the game's gone I, you know, we're pleased to score the few goals because as I say um, they made it really difficult they dogged us over the pitch. Um, and it was a matter of us uh, you know, making sure we capitalised and didn't make a mistake that they were looking for. Well, it's 20 matches now unbeaten. How much further do you think you can extend that sequence? Well, I'd like to think it's going to be about uh, 31 or 32, depending on, uh, on uh, cup ties. We've got, well, I think, eight in the league, and we've got uh, one definite cup tie. Um, hopefully, there's a couple more than that. Um, and hope we can keep it going. But it's not so easy. It's easy to talk about, but not so easy to do. Well, it's Villa in the semi-final, a team that you've beaten twice reasonably comfortably in the last few weeks. Is that something that uh, gives you a, some comfort as you go into this game? No, not really. I, I mean, you, I, we've beaten them twice. I would never say they were comfortably. I think we, we had a, a blitz of a start here, which was, which was smashing. The game at Villa was really closely fought, and uh, they're, they're, they're a quality team. They play good football, and uh, there's not going to be an easy game against them. We've got to be, again, right up for it and right at our best. Can Liverpool still do the double? There's been talk of Manchester United with a chance. Well, we've got a chance because we're still involved in both competitions, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still very difficult. We're still um, third of three in the, uh, in the league race. Um, we're in the semi-final against a, um, a difficult team, um, but we're keeping going, and uh, let's, let's keep it that way. Indeed. Wish you luck. Thank you, Roy. Thank you. You wouldn't expect anything else from Anfield and Estate as usual. Now let's have a look back on this. Steve McManaman with the opening goal. And we've been saying, Andy, that the longer he went, the more opportunities he hit. One surely was going to find the target. And when it did, cool, special, wasn't it? Yeah, fantastic strike. I mean, he goes by people very easily, but I think he'll have even surprised himself there how well he's hit that with his left peg. Um, John Lukic may have been a bit unsighted by Colton Palmer here. I mean, uh, you know, even from the TV angle, you can only see it late. That's a great it strike. It is fizzing though, isn't oh, it? It's it a super net, shot. Even. Yeah, it's a hell of a good strike. Second, very different. Scored with the right foot. Robbie Fowler had a hand in it. What did you make of this, Gareth? 
well, typical Liverpool play, isn't it? I mean, they look to play one twos around the edge of the box if they can, and a, a calm finish. I mean, I thought he was superb on the night. They tried to Leeds tried to man mark him. Um, Is that the right policy? Well, it's. I mean, it's a difficult job for anybody. Um, Mark Ford hasn't played that many games. I thought he, he stuck at his task, but he's so hard to get near, and he's given the freedom of the park by Liverpool. And I think it, you've really got to look to stop him from playing if you're going to have any success against them. And then, by way of a bonus from their point of view, Robbie Fowler chipped in with a third from the free kick. He went the other way against Manchester United. Did maybe Lukic have that in his mind, I wonder? Yeah, I don't think John will be too happy with his wall there, to be fair. That's gone that's gone through almost head height. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think uh, he's not going to have a lot of chance with that. I mean, that's wall side, and he's expecting someone there to, to hopefully get their head on that. Um, but, uh, I mean, it's typical Robbie Fowler again. You know, he's hitting the target, and uh, he's proved, you know, what a great finisher he is. What do you do to stop them, Gareth? That's your job, next up in the semi-finals. <laughs> well, we'll keep that under wraps because we don't know it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think Leeds had a, a good idea of, of stopping them at Elland Road, but I think they perhaps needed to be a bit more positive on that occasion. Um, a semi-final, I think you've got to go there and, and we've got to try and get at Liverpool. Definitely. We've got to play um, yep. to get our strengths. Yeah. Absolutely, you've got, to be, you've got to go and you know and have a go, I think. If you, if you play against them with any sort of fear in you, in your, you know, from the start, uh, they'll capitalise on that. They've got too many good players. If you sit back and let them keep coming at you, coming at you, you've got to do what you what you're own, what you're good at. Your own team, be positive and get at them and try and put their back 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 five under pressure. You know, that's what you've got to do. Just a reminder that in the other quarterfinal replay, Chelsea are leading now 3-1. Manchester United are waiting for them. What a big game for United at Old Trafford this evening. Arsenal, the opposition, two goals or better, of course, would put United back on top. This is first half action, and it's still going on, incidentally. An opportunity for Ryan Giggs there. One coming up here for Roy Keane, who scored against Newcastle United like that. That one hits the post. Andy Cole trying to scramble it in. Cole himself then had a, a chance. Not much going for him right now in front of goal. Keown blocking that. And away it goes. But still they poured forward. The attendance, incidentally, at Old Trafford tonight, 50,028. The biggest crowd anywhere in the Carling Premiership. And how about this for Joe Cool at half-time? Kevin Keegan making the draw. <laughs> I wonder what sort of reception he got. Warm by the looks of it. Making the draw at half-time for well, winning lottery tickets, you imagine. Just after the break, Eric Cantona. Four in four for him now in the league and all big goals as well. 1-0 then Manchester United. But Arsenal weren't done. They're pushing hard for a European place. Glenn Helder bringing a very good save out of Peter Schmeichel. And still they weren't finished. John Hartson there. One nil it remains. Andy Cole, incidentally, was brought off. It has, final whistle has just gone. Andy Cole, I was going to say, substituted early in the second half. Scholes came on. But it's over. Manchester United 1, Arsenal 0. So they're level on points again at the top. One goal difference in Newcastle United's favour, which keeps them top of the pile tonight. And they'll have two games in hand once again, Newcastle United. But uh, relief at Old Trafford as they go through. It's boiling up into a fabulous finish, isn't it? Oh, it is, yeah. It's looking really good now. I mean, you know, United, fair play to them. They've had a terrific run since, uh, since just after Christmas. And, uh, yeah, it's really hotting up. Newcastle are going to... Uh, Gonna, gonna be all under all pressure, you know, all sorts of pressure over the next couple of months. Could you, could you choose one yet? Newcastle, mm, Manchester United, no. Liverpool. Not yet. I mean, I'd still make Newcastle favourites because I mean, you know, they've got, they've got the games there in hand, and if they win those matches, um, they'll still have a, a, a cushion. But uh, it's going to be very, very tight. And you, I mean, before the game started, Gareth, you were saying it was a four-way chase up until about a week or so ago. That Aston Villa fancied it as well, quietly. Yeah, well, I think uh, everybody wrote us off. But if if we had won the two games we've had this week, we would have been above Liverpool in the league. Um, that hasn't happened. Um, you just wonder with United, they've gone the distance now. They've been there or thereabouts the last four or five seasons, and that experience can only be a strength for their um, challenge. And uh, you know they've come good again at the right time. 
And I mean, Cantona just gets the important just goals, doesn't he? Just phenomenal, isn't it? Incredible. It's extraordinary. Just in the right place at the right time, all the time, it seems, for Manchester United right now. Reminder then at Old Trafford tonight, 1 0 to Manchester United. Eric Cantona's goal separating the teams. Here at Anfield, Liverpool have booked their place in the FA Cup semi finals. 3 0. Steve McManaman with a couple, and Robbie Fowler with the third. And uh, the other quarter final replay going on at Selhurst Park. Last we heard, it was 3 1 to Chelsea. Michael Dewberry in the second half, and Mark Hughes getting a third. So 3-1 to Chelsea, which I understand is still a latest score. It's not. It's full-time. Chelsea are through. It's full-time. Chelsea have made it through to the semi-finals for a date against Manchester United. Uh, Dennis Wise had a penalty saved in that game after Dan Petrescu had given them the lead. John Goodman equalising, then Dewberry and Hughes for Chelsea. 3-1 the final score. Quite a comeback by Bolton, who were three down against Spurs tonight. Howells, Fox and Armstrong for Tottenham. Alan Stubbs and Scott Sellers scored late goals for Bolton, but they lost it 3-2. And uh, down at the Dell, another vital game tonight. Southampton nil, Sheffield Wednesday 1. Mark de Greiser with the only goal scored after just one minute. They held on for the other 89. All the details and scores from elsewhere around the country tonight coming up in the Sports Centre when we finish. But let's just uh, cast our mind forward to the um, Coca-Cola Cup final at the weekend. Andy, uh, having seen Leeds here tonight, mm -hmm. are you confident of uh, picking a trophy up? Well, I think if we play to our uh, capabilities, you know, I, I'm, I'm confident that, uh, that we can win, yeah. I mean, Leeds are, you know, are a tough side. They have got good players and, as I say, we'll have to be at our game. Um, we'll have to be doing the business, but I, I do feel that, uh, yeah, that we can win the match. Are you going to make it, Gareth? You've been carrying an injury of late? Yes, I've, I've missed the last couple of games um, with ankle ligaments. Um, the progress has been really good. It's gone better than I could have hoped for, really. Um, uh, fingers crossed, I started running today. So uh, it's looking as if I'll be available for selection. Well, that's great news for you. Well, we wish you well if that's the case. And, of course, tonight, confirmation of the semi-final draw. At last, it seems to have gone on forever, doesn't it? But now we do know the semi-final draw for the FA Cup. It's Aston Villa against Liverpool. That will be played at Old Trafford. You'll also see it live here on Sky Sports. Aston Villa against Liverpool. And it's Chelsea against Manchester United. Chelsea finally making it through this evening. And that's, of course, a rerun of the final a couple of years back. But... Um, it's all still continuing to roll and bubble up into a fabulous finish in both the FA Cup and the league. McManaman with two and Robbie Fowler tonight for Liverpool. Chelsea are through as well. And Aston Villa, of course, through to the Coca-Cola Cup final at the weekend. And with um, the sights set firmly now on a return to Wembley, if you can get past Liverpool. And the attitude is, get at them. I think so. I think so. You know, um, FA Cup semi-final. As Steve McManaman said, you know, it's uh, at Old Trafford, in neutral ground. Big occasion, I'll get out there and, and have a go. Big crowd there as well, 50,028 in tonight to watch Manchester United. You pleased it's Old Trafford? There's been some discussion yeah. about Wembley semi-final venues of late. No, I think I think Wembley should be should be you know, safe for the final. It makes it just that bit more special. You agree, Gareth? Yes, absolutely. I think it's tradition. Um, I know that there were a couple of games played at Wembley, but it does take the shine off it. I, th I think we should keep Wembley as a prestige venue. Until you go there. Do you want to touch it? No, <laughs> no, 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 nobody ever does. <laughs> <laughs> OK, coming up next on Sky Sports, as I said, the Sky Sports Centre, all tonight's details behind the football and the scores, of course. Ten on Sky Sports goal. The uh, Hall of Fame tonight features Gordon Banks. That's followed by... Our World Cup Classic Series, Romania against Argentina tonight from the 1994 finals. Super Sunday takes us to Old Trafford. Spurs are next in line for Manchester United. That's three o'clock this coming Super Sunday. And a, another huge match at the Dell on Monday night. Southampton against Coventry. Saints beaten tonight. They've still got a game in hand on most. Coventry, the visitors. That's Monday night football next week. And on the Wednesday, make a date, England against Bulgaria. We're at Wembley, live with England, 7 o'clock start for the Green Flag International between England and Bulgaria. But tonight, Chelsea have made it through to the FA Cup semi-finals. Liverpool did a job here against Leeds United. They're there as well. From all of us, it's goodbye for now.
Sky Sports with Ford Escort takes you to the heart of the action.